Hey everyone, so I have been getting asked a lot recently if I could show you guys how to properly look through a company's balance sheet. So in today's video, that is exactly what we are going to be doing. But first, I want to let you guys know what a balance sheet actually is. So a balance sheet is one of three financial documents that companies have to report to the public. And the purpose of a balance sheet is to show you the financial strength of a business. The balance sheet shows you the assets, the liabilities, and the total shareholder equity of the business. And these three numbers and how they balance out is very important when you're looking at investing into a new business. So the best free place to go and take a look through companies' balance sheets, that I found at least, is Yahoo Finance. So I'm someone who learns best by having something shown to me and putting it into a practical use. So I'm just gonna show you guys directly on the computer how I go through balance sheets, what I'm looking for, and really how to read them. So let's just hop into the computer now and I'll show you guys some real world case studies so that we can all get a better idea of how to actually read a balance sheet. Okay, so when we go to Yahoo Finance, this is the homepage. And all you have to do is go up to the search bar up here and type in either the company or the ticker of the company that you wanna take a look into. So for example, let's just look into Delta Airlines today or DAL since I have been covering them recently on my channel. So when we type in DAL, this is the page that will be brought up. And this page has a lot of financial information about the business. But today we're just gonna be focusing on the balance sheet. So to get to the balance sheet, all you need to do is hit financials right here and then go to the balance sheet. And we do have the option to look at the annual balance sheet or the quarterly reported balance sheet. And their quarterly reported one will just break down all of their recent reported quarters. But today I wanna to focus on the annual balance sheets. So we can see here at the top, we have a breakdown of the company's total assets. So what assets are our cash, investments, and everything that the business owns that can be liquidated into cash. So think about your own personal assets. You may own a house, a car, money, and maybe some investments of your own, even your furniture. Anything that can be liquidated into cash is an asset that you own. And the same thing applies for businesses. So now let's just take a look at Delta's balance sheet. So we can see that Delta has current cash and cash equivalents of 2.8 billion. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, isn't this 2.8 million? But if we look up here, we can see that all numbers are reported in thousands. So this is really 2.8 million thousand, which is actually 2.8 billion. That's essentially what's going on here. So sometimes other companies will have other short-term investments and there will be a number right here. And then the cash and cash equivalents plus the short-term investments equals the total cash position of the company. But now let's look at net receivables. So Delta has $2.8 billion in net receivables as well. And what net receivables are is money that is owed to Delta. So when you're looking at other businesses, it's essentially just the money that is owed to the business that you're looking at. And inventory is just the amount of stuff that the business owns, and it's just the total dollar amount of that stuff. So in Delta's case, this could be airplane fuel or parts that they have for their airplanes. And the total amount of fuel and airplane parts that Delta owns is worth $1.2 billion. And then all of these things will be added up to equal the total current assets. And then right here, I have the real definition of what current assets are. And Google says cash and other assets that are expected to be converted to cash within a year. So when we see this total current assets on a balance sheet, it's essentially the amount of money that can be converted into cash within 12 months. So now every other asset on the balance sheet is an asset that is not expected to be liquidated within the next year. So when we're taking a look, for example, at gross property, plant, and equipment, this isn't reported as a current asset because Delta is not expecting to liquidate their planes or you know their buildings within the next 12 months. So it doesn't belong in the current assets portion of the balance sheet. So I hope that makes sense. But anyways, let's continue going. So Delta has gross property, plant, and equipment totaling of $53.9 billion. But on their property, plant, and equipment, they had depreciation of about $17 billion. So this depreciation goes against the total dollar amount of the actual property, plant, and equipment. So when you minus the depreciation, you get left with your net property, plant, and equipment. And for Delta, in this case, it is $36.9 billion. So just think about depreciation on your car, for example. When you buy a new car within the next few years, that car loses a lot of value just in depreciation. And this depreciation right here is what Delta is reporting on the balance sheet. So now let's take a look at Goodwill. And Goodwill is one of the assets that Warren Buffett calls a soft asset because Goodwill is not a real asset. Let's just go right to Investopedia and see what Goodwill actually is. 
Investopedia says goodwill is an intangible asset that is associated with the purchase of one company by another. Specifically, goodwill is the portion of the purchase price that is higher than the sum of the net fair value of all the assets purchased in the acquisition and the liabilities assumed in the process. The value of a company's brand name, solid customer base, good customer relations, good employee relations, and proprietary technology represent some examples of goodwill. So when a business goes and acquires another business, they usually pay quite a significant premium on that business. So I'm just going to give you guys a very quick and easy example. Say a company's book value is roughly worth $10 billion. And then the acquiring company wants to come in and buy that business. But they decide to buy that business for $12 billion. That means that the acquiring company paid an extra $2 billion in goodwill for the business that they purchased. So this is why Warren Buffett sees goodwill as a soft asset. Because you can't really liquidate goodwill on the balance sheet. Because it's not really worth anything now that you've acquired the business. And if we take a look at intangible assets, these are also assets that Warren Buffett calls soft assets. And this is because intangible assets are not physical assets. So this is kind of like brand recognition, brand names, and things like that. So again, this is not a physical asset that can be converted into cash. So just keep these two figures in mind when you're looking at a company's balance sheet, and especially goodwill. So when you add up all of these assets, you get the total non-current assets. And for Delta, we have a total of $56 billion in non-current assets. And then at the bottom here, we have the total assets. So what the total assets are, are the non-current assets plus the total current assets. And that will give you the company's total assets. But now let's go and take a look at liabilities on the balance sheet. So liabilities are what the company owes, essentially the amount of money that the company has to pay. So think about your own liabilities. You might have credit card debt or a mortgage. These are things that you owe and these are your own liabilities. So the top part of the liabilities will be the company's current liabilities. And current liabilities is everything that is expected to be paid off within the next 12 months or within the next year. So for example, when we take a look at Delta's current debt, we can see that they have $2.2 billion worth of debt that they have to pay off within the next 12 months. And then if we take a look at accounts payable, what this number is is the amount of money that the business owes to creditors or suppliers. So in Delta's case, we can see that they owe $3.2 billion to their creditors or their suppliers. Accrued liabilities are expenses that the business has that have not yet been paid. So this is another form of debt and another form of a liability. And in Delta's case, we can see that they have $4.7 billion worth in accrued liabilities. Deferred revenue is the amount of money that the business has received for services or products that have not yet been delivered. So in Delta's case, this is flights that have been pre-booked or prepaid that the passenger has not yet flown on. So Delta has received this money, but the passenger has not yet flown on the plane. And that is what deferred revenue is. And then other current liabilities could be any number of things. And if you want to find what all of these other current liabilities are, you're actually going to have to go to the company's specific balance sheet and see what all these numbers are. Yahoo Finance just doesn't report everything. So if you want to do more digging, you have to go to the actual business's balance sheet. So with all of these things added up, we get the total current liabilities. And in Delta's case, they have just over $20 billion worth of total current liabilities. And then everything under the total current liabilities are the liabilities that are not owed within the next 12 months. So this is kind of like long-term liabilities. And, and we can see this right here with long-term debt. And Delta has $8.8 .8 billion worth of long-term debt. And then for deferred taxes liabilities, we have a definition right here from Investopedia. Deferred tax liability is a tax that is assessed or is due for the current period but has not yet been paid. So it's essentially the amount of tax that the business still owes. And then deferred revenues is the same as the deferred revenues up here. It's just deferred revenues on services that are not expected to be performed within the next year. So in Delta's case, this is like pre-booked flights that are for 2021, if that makes sense. And then other long-term liabilities are just all of the other long-term liabilities that Delta has that Yahoo Finance doesn't want to specifically report. So we have the total non-current liabilities here of $28.9 billion. And then when you add the current liabilities to the non-current liabilities, you get the total liabilities. And in Delta's case, this is $49 billion. So now let's go down to the very bottom at stockholders' equity. And retained earnings is the amount of net income the business generated after paying out all of its dividends. And then under retained earnings, we have accumulated other comprehensive income. This is also known as OCI. And what this is is unrealized gains or losses that the business experienced. 
And then right here, we have a very important number at the bottom, and this is total stockholder equity. And total stockholder equity is the number that balances out the balance sheet. So I'll show you how we get this number. So if we take Delta's total current assets of $64.5 billion, and we minus their total liabilities of 49 billion 174 million we get left with 15.3 billion and this is what the total stockholder equity is it's essentially the assets minus the liabilities and the amount of assets that is left over and that amount of assets that is left over is the stockholder equity and then at the bottom here we have total liabilities and stockholder equity and this is just essentially all of the assets that the business owns the total assets Okay, so now that we have taken a look through the balance sheet and what all of these numbers mean, how do we determine if this is actually a financially stable company? One calculation that a lot of investors such as myself like to do is the total current assets divided by the total current liabilities. So in Delta's case, we can look at the total current assets of 8249 and we can scroll down and divide this by the total current liabilities, which is 2204 and we get 0 0.040. Now, I want to let you guys know that when investors are looking into businesses, they like this number to be above one. Now, I actually kind of chose a bad example here because airlines are very highly leveraged businesses and they usually carry a lot of debt on their balance sheets. So let's go to Google because Google has a very, very good balance sheet. And let's do all of the same calculations. So let's take a look at Google's total current assets and they have 152 billion in total current assets. Like that's actually insane. So let's take 152 billion 578 million and let's divide this by their total current liabilities. And their total current liabilities down here is 45.2 billion. So let's divide this by 45221 and we get 3.37. So as an investor, when you see 3.37, that is very, very good. You usually at least want a ratio above one and a ratio above two is considered very good. A ratio above three tells me that Google is not going to go out of business. They have a lot of money and a lot of assets. So essentially what I'm trying to say is the higher this ratio of current assets versus current liabilities, the safer and less risky the business actually is. And let's just think about the reason behind this. So if Google's revenue completely stopped and the business just completely shut down right now, it means that Google has enough current assets to pay off all of their total current liabilities over three times. So that's what I mean by this business does not carry a lot of risk because they have more than enough assets to pay off all of their liabilities and be completely okay. And that is essentially all you're doing when you're looking at balance sheets is you're just comparing the assets versus the liabilities and then trying to make a judgment on is this business okay? Are they risky? Or is this business way too over leveraged and they have way too much debt? So now I wanna show you guys some other things that investors look for in the balance sheet. So we can see here at the top that we have 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016. So when you're investing into a business, you wanna see if the total current assets, the total cash position, and all of these other numbers have been growing in the right direction over the years. So for example, we can take a look at Google's cash position from 2016, and we can see that they had $86 billion in cash. In 2017, it went up to 101 billion, 2018 it went up to 109 billion, and then 2019 it went up to 119 billion. So we can see that over the years, Google is growing their cash position. And we can see that this is also the same for their total current assets. In 2016, they had assets of 105 billion, 2017, 124 billion, 2018, 135 billion, and then 2019, 152 billion. So their assets are also growing in the right direction. And we could do the same thing for the total current liabilities. So we can see that in 2016, Google had $16 billion in liabilities. 2017 was 24 billion, 2018 is 34 billion, and 2019 was 45 billion. And this is kind of where your own judgment has to come into play because we're seeing that Google is taking on more debt every single year. And this would be concerning if their total assets were not growing. So for example, if their total current assets were going down and down and down, and their liabilities were going up and up and up, then that tells you that there is a problem with the business because the debt is going up and the assets are going down. So the company is moving in the wrong direction. And when you're looking at these numbers, you don't just wanna be taking a look at the current liabilities. 
the current liabilities are very good to pay attention to, but you also wanna take a look at the total liabilities versus the total assets. So let's just do another example here. So we can see that the total liabilities for Google are also increasing every single year. But if we take a look at their total assets, their total assets are also increasing significantly every single year. So this tells me that Google's increased liabilities are not much of an issue because their assets are also growing significantly. And then the last number that we really want to pay attention to on the balance sheet is the total stockholder equity. Because when you buy the business, this is essentially how much equity you're getting as a shareholder. And we also know from earlier on in the video that stockholder equity is the total assets minus the total liabilities. So if your stockholder equity is going down over the years, it means that the company is getting more liabilities than they are building assets. So you really want the total stockholder equity to be continually increasing year over year. And in Google's case, that is exactly what is happening. The total stockholder equity went from 139 billion in 2016, all the way up to 201 billion in 2019. So their stockholder equity is going up. So based on the balance sheet, everything with this business seems to be going in the right direction. And this means that this is a business that you can then go on to take a look further into to see if you wanna make a full investment. Now you don't get enough information from the balance sheet alone to decide if you want to invest into the business. It's just one of the first things that I go and take a look into to see if this is a business that I could see myself investing into. So basically what I'm trying to say is that if the financials don't check out, then I don't even bother taking a further look into the company. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video and I really hope this video helped you guys out. I know that it was kind of a longer one, but I wanted to go really in depth and line by line to try and explain everything that I read on these balance sheets. If you guys did enjoy this video or you found it helpful, all that I ask is that you please leave a like on the video. It just really helps out my channel and I really appreciate it. And if this is your first time on my channel and you wanna stick around and see more content like this, then please feel free to subscribe as well because that would be pretty awesome. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you again in the next one.